how can I do it? Or just uh, thinking in the sun, in the beach, and uh, there's uh, no changes. So uh, there's no always a direct relation between thinking or doing things and changing uh, peripheral temperature. In fact, there are many times where there are no changes at all if you are doing physiological uh, uh, things like breathing. So it is not as easy as it uh, uh, seems. And uh, also there are uh, not only techniques for doing, uh, for, for doing uh, uh, um, uh, temperature training, but also uh, sensor placement and also uh, knowing how, how to read as a, as a practitioner those changes because in many times changes are due to also artifacts and uh, those kinds of artifacts are due to a bad uh, uh, placing of the sensor something that the uh, patient does or even the sensor is not going and uh, is not working properly Okay, so we are going to see all these uh, uh, things in a short period of time. So it is not as easy as it seems. There in the screen you see uh, an old, a very old uh, temperature device, yeah. uh, equivalent uh, to the old machines that we saw yesterday. Now they are not um, used anymore, but they still work because they were uh, uh, well uh, built. Okay, one thing is that the thermometer or the device has to be uh, accurate and there has only um, with a short uh, um, resolution and it has to be with all that range between 50, 65 uh, to 100 degrees and uh, you, can all, you can use both uh, uh, scales, Celsius and uh, Fahrenheit uh, but as I told you yesterday, I do prefer to use Fahrenheit because it has more resolution. So um, the, 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 the patient has more opportunities to read all the changes he's, uh, he's doing. For, for example, yesterday with Alina, we saw after she was breathing, she couldn't do it with the um, heart rate uh, distribution, but she did it very well with the temperature temperature begin to rise and rise and rise and rise and uh, by the way this is the best way to train the people to uh, control uh, temperature it has a, a relation direct relation between breathing uh, blood vessels in all, all over the, the body but uh, uh, mainly in the peripheral part and um, the raising of the temperature. That's the resolution that a system has to have. It has to be very accurate because the changes can, uh, if they are big changes, but without resolution, but well, they're not uh, a way to see how is it changing. And uh, sometimes you can see that the patient only about thinking small things or remembering small things, there's going to be changes in uh, small degrees. Um, this is um, one important thing also, the time constant. It is the uh, time that the system or the, the uh, equipment requires to reach the final body. It has to be in a second also, in a second. Uh, and you can imagine how fast these changes are. Now, um, there are different uh, ways of placing the sensor, but uh, you have to avoid, let me show you with the, one of the sensors here. You have to avoid many of them. And one of them is if the sensor 
is mm -hmm. in right. this position, yes. which is this effect, mm -hmm. because it will be out of the of the of the body. But all it is, it is going to be reading the room te mm -hmm. temperature, and we need to uh, we, we need to have that information to have the room temperature information, but not when we are training uh, uh, a patient. Okay. Um, well, you uh, you saw uh, yesterday how we uh, uh, place the uh, sensor with a linear. It has to be placed in this way. It can also be placed in this other way. And there are many places in the body where you can put the uh, temperature sensor. But uh, sometimes these places are a little bit invasive. No matter, they are really don't. But you have to. Uh, put away the clothes, for example, the shoe and the socks, and you have to put in, in uncomfortable conditions. So it's better to do it in the hand. Remember that I prefer to do it, I prefer to do it in relation to the hidden dominance uh, in the uh, hand, the hidden one, okay? About the tape, use the tape and attach the tape in the same way we did it yesterday, with this, this position. Never in this one, because you can cut the uh, blood circulation and then you will have the first type of artifact and it is very common. And also, well, you have to, uh, to prevent the movement. If, they are, if the sensor moves then you are going to have different type of readings or no readings at all. No readings from the patient, but uh, from uh, the, the room temperature, for example. And also, there are uh, many places, but uh, there are two much more common places. The web dorsum, like this one, with this vein, or the finger. Well, uh, I saw some, uh, uh, some people that use this finger also for temperature sensor. Mm -hmm. And in the other hand, the uh, skin conductance sensor. This is in the web. Uh, um, Dorsum, look the different type of sensor. It is a sensor uh, that, in fact, it has the, the, the shape of the finger. If mm -hmm. you Look carefully, you can pass oh, it through. Yes. It has the shape of the uh, finger, for example. Look. Try to find out the shape. Yes. Yes, I don't care like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are other sensors, for example, the one that I have with the other system, that are more likely to be used in this position. There are other type of sensors. This one isn't a very good uh, way to attach the sensor because it is the, the precisely the, the way we were talking about we shouldn't do. And this is another type of uh, sensor. I, I do not like this type of, se of sensors because it uh, can be done with another type of artifact. If the uh, patient holds too tight the, the thermistor, there is going to be an artifact because we are reading the temperature of both uh, uh, digits. Mm -hmm. This one and this one, mm -hmm. okay? For, for home training though, mm -hmm. if you, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I use, well, so something similar to that. I do, I do tell them not to hold them very tight yeah, uh -huh. or not to do this kind of stuff either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they, are, they, they, they want to get feedback uh, immediately. Uh, they're like, they're oh, playing with the sensor right, and right. they can broke it or right. have an artifact. Thank you. Uh, this one for home training is better. Okay. Okay. I don't do too much home training because sometimes people just doesn't do it or they do not do it properly. So I do not do it um, uh, uh, a lot, but, and I prefer to do a lot of uh, office training. Mm -hmm. It is much, uh, much uh, uh, reliable. Um, well, this is very important. 
it has been done in, in, in this type of research, and it has been found that there is no differences in um, the place. And what do you think? I'm asking. What do you think? This is uh, uh, the, the reason of, uh, for this. There's a, a specific reason. What do you think? This is the reason. There is no a better place. For example, uh, the, the feet, or the hands, or the neck, or uh, why do you think there is no uh, changes? It is a reflex. When you uh, reach a certain state, yes. remember we, te we talked about uh, uh, yesterday about myotatic reflex. So when you reach a certain state, you get to a uh, relaxation, a certain level of relaxation, you lower the muscular tone and at the same time you got the um, uh, uh, distribution of the blood. So it is a general reflex in a general condition when you low arousal. And that's the reflex, mm -hmm. not only the distribution of the blood. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So when you, as uh, the same way, arousal is in part a reflex we were talking about yesterday. It, it comes first, the, the um, orientational reflex mm -hmm. about a, a certain type of changes in the environment. Then you have arousal as a secondary reflex. Mm -hmm. You can't control it. No. no. Okay. Then you have the opposite, a reflex when arousal is going down, and you have two changes: mm. the changes in muscular tone and also in glute distribution. Mm. Unless you have a, a condition like renal the right. disease, then the condition is very different. But if you don't, you will have that uh, that response or another specific condition that it, it is a lesion uh, in one specific muscle. But uh, thank you about that um, intervention because there's another uh, reason why you cannot have enough uh, changes in a place with the temperature. Mm -hmm. Because if you have um, a, a specific lesion in a muscle being due to exercise or a position mm -hmm. or a bad movement, mm -hmm then you would not have changes in, in temperature. Okay. Okay. Did everybody follow this uh, discussion? Okay, so we have to um, consider that uh, that point, um, there are not a specific uh, uh, or a better place for uh, placing the, the, the thermistor or the sensor, but there are more comfortable places. And the hand is one of them. Okay. Uh, this part about the plateau. When you start training, many people could be in a plateau, up or down, it doesn't matter. If they are um, in this plateau, they are less responsive. In that case, different places could be more responsive. Then you have to change the terms. But it is not very common. It is not very common. Okay? The, what it is common is that when you have a plateau, maybe it is because the patient or the person isn't very responsive at temperature changes at all. And then you are going to have a little bit of problems trying to train it. Okay? But, uh, well, temperature training is diff a difficult one. So that's the reason why we have to do hookups like the one we did yesterday in, with the, both machines, different type of, um, of, uh, of sensors. Now, there are several effects that we have to consider that affect that uh, do temperature uh, difficult training or uh, affect uh, uh, temperature training. 
this the first one is the one that I was talking to you about, uh, about a few moments ago. Some people go to a top or a certain type of uh, uh, value and they, ca they can uh, change it, okay? They are not very responsive. In some cases you have to uh, drop away the temperature training. You can use it for a, a, a time until you have or, or you found uh, uh, changes. But do not train everybody in temperature. Not everybody is uh, uh, sensitive or responsive to temperature. If they are uh, using some type of chemicals, natural or artificial, natural for example like coffee or uh, <laughs> they are smoking, yeah. they are going to have different effects in temperature. In fact, you have to tell the patients if they are smoking as a habit and you are now treating smoke as a problem in the, mm. in the, in the, in the therapy, mm. you have to ask them not to smoke an hour before they are mm. in therapy. And that's very difficult yeah, to do. And they stress out. Yeah. <laughs> but that's very difficult to do for them, okay? If they have hyperventilation, well, then you have to treat hyperventilation first. And that's the most important uh, issue. Mm -hmm. uh, if they have metabolic uh, um, facts, well, you have to, to, to know about it. But that, that's why, that's wh uh, uh, what um, intake or the first interview is for. Um, sympathetic or parasympathetic activation, but we are studying that in the, in the, in the treatment so, or in the session, so that's uh, not a, a, a problem, but we have to be aware of uh, that. Uh, physical activity, for example, if they go running, they go jogging, they have uh, uh, activity in the gym, well, maybe that will, have, will raise temperature and then uh, um, will give you different type of values than the, that the ones of the uh, patient will have without this activity. Cold or hot environment. For example, if the patient goes to wash her, uh, the hands with cold water, you are going to, fa uh, to find there is um, an effect with that, and a STEMI uh, effect we just um, discussed it. Sorry, what is that? The, the STEM, STEM effect? Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, like if it was the... Um, how would you say it? Um, from the yeah. yeah. When, when the goes, sensor is uh, hanging off the yeah, yeah. In the in the finger, okay. but um, okay, uh, the part of a plant that yes. holds all the leaves. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is yeah. rigid. Yes. Uh -huh. And outside the the leaves and outside yes, the yes, rest yes. of the of the, the, the uh, and the yeah. stem. Yeah. Okay. That would be the effect because let me find where is the sensor because it is not related to the body it is not related to the living part of the of the person okay it is from the environment okay and it, it is important to look at that effect because many people the first thing they do when they are beginning their training as um, as uh, uh, specialists in in, um, in in biofeedback the first thing they do is this. Mm -hmm. It's very tough. Okay, I'm going to put this here <laughs> so I don't lose it anymore. <laughs> okay, now all these uh, drugs can affect by increasing or decreasing skin temperature. You see, it is not so easy, and it ha we have to be aware of many things. You, you, you can see, for, for example, here different um, drugs that are related to um, vasodilatation. All that drugs will affect a temperature. And we have another one that causes the opposite effect. 
and then we are going to, uh, to have vasoconstriction. In those cases, that will be an artificial effect on skin temperature. So, <clears throat> from a practical perspective, when somebody comes in and you know they tell you they're taking antidepressant medication. Well, uh, one thing you can do mm -hmm. is to avoid using uh, uh, temperature readings or to use it, but knowing that the changes are not very reliable. Okay. If the, if the antidepressant medication is something that they take every day, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be a constant? I mean, like the... It's supposed to be a constant, but it is not, because it is a relative constant with uh, added to many other changes like environment, uh, physiological changes, so you can be confident that the, the, the variable is going to have the same reasons. Hmm. I can think of almost all my patients are in some of those medications. Yes, that's the reason why you have to do the training with all these sensors, not mm -hmm. only with one. Right. Uh -huh. But there were many years where people were trained to be a, 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 a practitioners only with this. Mm -hmm. Remember, using only this is not reliable. Talking about other things, room condition. We have to take care about room condition, and you can use the same sensor to test room condition. Just to leave it like this in the air for a moment, and then you will know the room condition. Take care about the room's conditions with. Um, that are below 68 degrees because they are going this this condition is going to affect the body the, the body condition okay. the the other thing on the bottom of the uh, the mm -hmm. slide there it talks about drafts mm -hmm. and um, and that also can be from the air conditioning and things mm -hmm. like that so even if the temperature is in the right range it can vary because if the air conditioning kicks on and you're in the line of the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the blowing air, that can you may see the temperature start to go down, <laughs> and you think it's the not, person. That's not right. That happens to you and to you yesterday with the air conditioning in this. You you were down there. Even an open window sometimes uh, can, can. Or the clothes mm -hmm. or the type of uh, uh, furniture can affect the uh, yes. Um, you're right. All the inanimated or not living objects can, <laughs> can absorb t temperature. So we have to take care of uh, these type of conditions. <laughs>